It's Steelers week, and I really can't wait for this game, man. I'm super excited for Ravens to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers because it just feels a little bit different, especially with everything with Deshaun Elliott and Patrick Queen. But with Lamar Jackson being here, this being a meaningful game for both teams because both teams are doing really good right now, and I think that's probably the biggest difference for me. I know my wife been saying she's been nervous. She's nervous for this game, and I'm nervous too. But this should be a really, really good one and a really, really fun one. Team Keep It Clean, we got some big roster updates for the Baltimore Ravens. We're getting ready to talk about Before we do Make sure you subscribe To the channel Turn notifications on And leave a like On the video baby I love y'all Let's get straight into it Isaiah Likely Who Isaiah Likely Who missed the last game With this This hamstring injury He Was Back Practicing And that is a good thing Because We've been talking about it man Um as a Ravens fan, it's just so crazy. And we've highlighted it before. Lamar Jackson said it. Pick your poison. But it's literally been that. We know Isaiah Likely. We know how good he is. And he hasn't even been a consistent part of the offense. I mean, he's been there. He made a catch or two here and there. But he hasn't been like this huge, big part of the offense. But he does still put in work, whether it's blocking, whether it's making a crucial catch here and there. Isaiah Likely is still one of them guys. But... In times before, when one of our guys on offense was out, it'd be like, oh my goodness. And it's still like, oh my goodness. But it's still like, wait a minute. We're straight. We, we, we're good. Like, let him rest. Don't rush back. Chill, Isaiah. You got this. So, with Isaiah likely, uh, with him being back, it just makes, well, not officially, officially back, back, but him practicing, he's on the road to playing soon. Uh, whether it's this week or whether it ends up being next week, but Isaiah likely is going to be back in the fold real, real soon. But just with the Baltimore Ravens offense, like Lamar said, pick your poison. Pick your poison. What's it going to be? Who are you going to try to stop? Because for everything, for everything that you can try to stop, whether you try to key in on this running back, Oh, we got another one. We got actually got another two. You try to key in on this tight end. Oh, we got another one. We actually got another two. You try to key in on this receiver. Oh, we got another one. We got another two. We got another three or four, actually. Because you... It, it's, <laughs> it's just offense, man. <laughs> it makes me so happy, man, because... We dreamed of stuff like this with Ravens offense before, man. We really, really did, man. And we've seen glimpses of it here and there, like obviously 2019. And then even last year, once they really started rolling. But this year has just been different, man. Because they've been able to do Last year, they started being able to do it different ways. But this year, they've been able to do it dominantly, both ways. Running, passing. Pick, pick which, one, which one you want to try to stop. Because if you try to stop one, they'll do the other. If you try to stop the other, they'll do the other. And a lot of times they do both. So this Ravens offense is so dangerous. And you add Isaiah Likely back to the mix, they get at much more versatile. Deontay Johnson, a uh, question from a subscriber from uh, yesterday's video. Somebody brought it up with how Harbaugh and the Ravens, they can be real petty and they can be real, they can be big time trolls when it comes to players and former teams and whatnot. Um, I would expect Deontay Johnson to get couple of a couple of targets this game a lot more than he's gotten over the past two games and obviously he was new the past two games now he'll have a lot more practice under his belt so I could really see that really starting to, to happen him getting some more shots um John Harbaugh he talked about the three-headed monster it's like Raven and again we we've been waiting on it all season long with Keaton Mitchell with Keaton Mitchell, uh, he of course made his season debut against the uh, Cincinnati Bengals last Thursday night. But now, like he'll have another week of practice under his belt, so I would expect his carries to not ramp up like crazy, but to for them to increase uh, quite a bit. But um, John Harbaugh talked about the three-headed monster, and it's like before Keaton Mitchell even got here, Ravens were killing it on the ground. But now you add a Keaton Mitchell back to Derrick Henry and Justice. <laughs> Ooh, and I know um, we so happy about the offense and the defense has been they've been a big yikes they just look defense please man y'all ain't gotta be top 10 you just just be decent be 16th overall 17th overall you ain't gotta be top 10 man just get out get out from the 30s and the 20s man don't be in there unless you're gonna be the highest even if you 20th ranked defense we would take that because the offense like they the our offense is obviously good enough to get it done but yeah anyway um speaking of defense 
uh, an update there with Kyle Hamilton. Um, it is not looking like he's going to play this week. Obviously, things could change, but it's not looking the best. But I think it is trending to him playing next week for sure. Now, if he plays this week, hey, it, it is a possibility. Because, you know, with Super Duper Kyle, he, he is Super Duper Kyle for a reason. Remember when he left that Rams game last year? Then they ended up coming back, I think, what was it, the following week or the week after? I don't know. But anyway, Kyle Hamilton, he has he, he deals with some lower leg injuries from time to time. Um, but his recovery, obviously he's a young guy, but his recovery can be crazy. Because he's crazy. Because he's just like, he's Super Duper. So if he plays this week, I'll be pleasantly surprised. But... Yeah, I, I would think more next week. But hey, Ravens, Kyle Hamilton, if you ready, you want to prove me wrong, by all means, go for it. But I think this is a big opportunity for the Baltimore Ravens um, with Kyle Hamilton possibly being out. Um, if they decide, you know what, we don't want to rush him, we'll, we'll just wait till next week. Okay, cool. But with Kyle Hamilton, if he's out, this is a big opportunity for the Ravens to really see who they got on their roster. Because maybe, just maybe, um, Ravens fans will finally get to see something that they've been calling for for a long time. Maybe. maybe. This is a small chance, maybe, but because a lot of Ravens fans have been like, hey, um, Marcus Williams, it's been rough with him. Eddie Jackson, yeah, it's been rougher than rough with him. But why don't you try out the young guys? Sanusi Kane, Bo Braid. And even though they're young, even though they're rookies, they both made the roster. Bo Braid as an undrafted rookie free agent. And Sanusi Kane as a, what, a six, seven round pick. I was, I was surprised with both of them making the roster because I just did not think it was going to happen. But this is a big opportunity for them to maybe get some playing time on defense. Ravens, just Ravens. I know y'all be hearing team keep it clean. Not necessarily me, but y'all be hearing them. So they've been suggesting it for a while. Why not? It, it could not hurt. Team Keep It Clean, now we reach my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. If you'd like to be part of it, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, if you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. All that stuff is down below in the description. Uh, but you can send your question directly on Patreon. Real quick, gotta give a shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, my guy Omar uh, and also my guy Isaac. Now with Omar, special story, funny story. Yesterday, um, he sent in a question for the very first time and he sent the question to the wrong email though and we, we called him out on it we said oh my look buddy don't send it to the wrong email buddy but you know it's, it's all good man and he just decided i guess he said you know what i'm gonna become a team keep it clean patron so omar i, I appreciate you a lot man you ain't had to do that but I, I thank you for being willing to do that so so thank you man uh and shout out to isaac also the newest team keep it clean patron and isaac i, I like this when when people become team keep it clean patrons when we start off with their question so we starting off with our guy isaac's question he said angry and love the videos i've never used patreon before but watching your videos finally made me get it i appreciate that man thank you he said i started watching last season around the trade deadline because i was hoping we would get saquon or derrick henry oh hey <laughs> we got close but anyway he said uh um, and thankfully we got him now anyways i always noticed this but it became clear to me uh, after the Ra ravens get the first ravens Bengals game tyler linderbaum is a great center one of the best in the league but he has an issue with snapping the ball whether that's timing or whatever but he often does it a few times every other game hmm. appreciate the videos and sorry for the long question but hope you and your family uh and everybody watching stay safe hmm mm. i i think um there have been a few bad snaps, but I don't think it's like a big issue. I think one of the issues happened with um, with just doing it late. I think Lamar was Lamar clapping. For, no, Lamar took his eyes off the ball. There, there was one where Lamar took his eyes. Off, there were two in that game actually where Lamar took his eyes off the ball. Both of those in that first Bengals game, yeah. So those were on Lamar because he he was calling for it and Tyler Linderbaum ain't snapping right away. But then when he did snap, Lamar like looked to the real quick. But you know that that's all it takes to 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 change everything. Um, but I I don't think. It's an on. It's a real, a real big issue. Um, I know there was one where he snapped it and it hit either Ricard or Zay Flowers too. So that was just a timing thing. But I, I don't think it's a big issue. But I guess it's something that we can all really watch out for. Baltimore Berg. Next question came from my guy Jay. He said, "Hello. First off, I appreciate you giving us the latest and most relevant news and updates for us Ravens fans to dive into. I'm the numero uno fan in Baltimore Berg, formerly known as Pittsburgh. <laughs> I appreciate you, Jay. So my question is this: Do the Ravens' pass defense have a chance to shut them Steelers up in Pittsburgh? Somebody made a good point 
in the questions yesterday, they talked about how Russell Wilson he likes to go deep, um, and that will give the Baltimore Ravens pass rushing opportunity to really get after him. Uh, obviously, he ain't going deep every play, but it is something that he does like to do, and he does a really good job of it. So the safety's gonna have to be on point, corners have to be on point. I mean, you know the rest of the story. But the pass rush, if they can just continue what they've been doing, what they did last week, then that can help a lot. And obviously, you got to st- start with stopping Najee Harris. Now with Najee Harris, good running back, tough running back, physical running back. Not the fastest, so I think that helps, but he's still a good running back. So you got to worry about him first, and then all that other stuff should take care of itself if you play your cards right. He said, my, um, he said the pass defense has failed time after time to produce consistency in games. Very true. Uh, he said, and you know the Steelers are definitely going to scheme up aggressive plays downfield with Pickens and their new addition at wide receiver, uh, Mike Williams from the Jets. Boom. I, I guess I should have kept reading because we're on the same page. He said, P.S., uh, he <laughs> should shoot your points and Ravens get to the bird. Oh, appreciate you though, man. He said, Best regards, Jay. Thank you, man. Next question came from Amos. He said, Ain't Raven and keep a clean family. Uh, this is Amos from Jersey. Just want to say congratulations to you and your new addition to your family. I appreciate all the hard work you do for us. No, I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you. He said, I just want to say, if we can get Michael Parsons uh, in the offseason, oh my goodness, our defense will be so good. I believe we're going all the way this year. Trust the process. I trust our defense going to figure it out. Lamar, the best in the world. Uh, we ain't worrying about the Steelers. On that note, I just want to say, Team Keep it clean, Flock Nation. Keep your heads up. We're going all the way. 2024 is ours. I'm out. Love y'all, Engraven. Hey, appreciate that, Amos. I love that. Next question came from Zara Knight. He said, hey, Engraven, hope you and the fam are doing good. But anyway, let's get into the question. I want to talk about Deontay Johnson. I don't know if you saw his tweet or not, but I'm assuming you did. Uh, if you didn't, he basically tweeted a cryptic message. Um, yeah, he said uh, he tweeted um, a couple days ago. A couple days. It was either a day after or two days after the Ravens and Bengals game He said it's two sides To every story And I saw that I said oh <laughs> we Like already You ain't even been here Two weeks But anyway uh, He said But the fact that He has only been here Two weeks And is already complaining Is very concerning In the latest interview With him on the Ravens YouTube channel Zay interrupted his interview Joking with him And they were both laughing Zay seems to help This locker room a lot But do you think Deontay Johnson's Chemistry issues Will mess up the locker room Um mm, No No I, I, I don't He just got here So the chemistry he's from florida though, so you're gonna get it but so the chemistry might not be all the way on point yet but it looked like it was a good ball but he just slipped it happens so he caught the other one from lamar but he just he ain't get out of bounds it was a great tackle by that Bengals defender um and then there was there was a little lack of urgency too but it, it, it's all good so he'll, he'll he'll get it together again this is a perfect week for him to get it together anyway he said also, I don't feel very confident in our Super Bowl chances right now. We aren't going to make it past teams like Buffalo or Kansas City if our defense keeps playing like this. Yeah, we can. We just got to outscore them like crazy. He said, and I know we already beat Buffalo, but I feel like Amari Cooper makes them an entirely different offense. Keen Mitchell makes us an entirely different offense, too. So does uh, Deontay Johnson. So does Tylen Wild. This is what we were talking about earlier. Like, we, hey, we a, we a real offense, man. We something serious. But anyway, he said, thanks for your time. And I love the VS. Appreciate it, there. Steelers week. Next question came from my guy, Hard Heavy. He said, if you notice, all three of our losses included a superstar pass rusher. Why are you doing this, man? Why are you doing this, my friend? Anyway, he said they included a superstar pass rusher, Miles Garrett, Max Crosby, or Chris Jones. That is true. You are right. Hey, it's a superstar. Yeah. He said, what would be your plan for T.J. Watt? And do you believe if we stop him, we win the game easily? Now, look, I can't say Ravens winning no Steelers game easily. I just It don't even sound right. Um, and, yeah, to stop him, you just got to have extra protection. It's going to be Justice Hill, I think Patrick Ricard, um, even Derrick Henry. But you got to do what you got to do to take T.J. Watt out the game. Now, of course, you don't want to – I don't want to say overcommit because you can never overcommit to somebody. But you don't want to – like strap yourself down as far as uh your your weapons but it's gonna be times when you he can't be one-on-one with somebody if you see him obviously he's gonna be going up against ronnie stanley a lot but if they move him over to the other side and go against roger rose hey send help let's send help offense wins championships next question came from my guy jerome he said what's up in great hope all is well i know our defense hasn't been good this year but do you think that our offense will soon to be three-time mvp lamar jackson our run game that's leading in rushing our three tight ends and our receiving core that we can make it to the super bowl and win a championship even if our defense continues to play with it the way they have been thank you and continue to be blessed appreciate you jerome i do i do I don't expect the defense to, I mean, and it sounds crazy because they have been playing pretty bad overall all, all year, but something got to give, man. Something got to give. Um, where they just start catching a few more picks, making a few more plays, getting a few more stops. Something got to give, but um, the Ravens can. I, I seriously do believe the Ravens can go all the way and win it all um, with the offense that they got, um, even with this defense. Because the defense, what they got to do 
if they're going to continue to be bad like this, they got to just be more opportunistic. They turn more of those opportunities and interceptions, swats, sacks, all that stuff, they'll be all right. The weather. Next question came from my guy Jay. He said, hey, what's going on? Ain't got no most of these Ravens are, as you quote them, Florida Ravens. But uh, I just thought about something, and it's kind of strange. It might not mean nothing. It might mean something. Who knows what I'm thinking about how warm it's been in all of these games that the Ravens have that the Ravens have played this so far this year. To me, it seems like it hasn't been football season most of the year because it's so warm up here in Baltimore. Usually, the cold weather games are when we take off. I mean, I haven't looked at any stats or anything like that, but it's just a feeling. was wondering what your thoughts might be. Um, It's football. Like, these guys done play football in all kinds of weather. You look at uh, Deontay Johnson. He played in Pittsburgh, so he knows what it's like to play in cold weather in all sorts of conditions. You look at Zay Flowers. He played at Boston College, so he knows what it's like to play in all sorts of weather conditions. Uh, and Lamar Jackson, he's been in the league for well, this is his seventh year, so he done played in all types of conditions. So, so they, they, they know what it's like. They know what it's like. So, um, yeah, it can have an impact on the game, but at the same time, you got Derrick Henry. And he done played in all sorts of weather conditions. And he is the perfect running back for all sorts of weather conditions. So, Ravens going to be all right in that front, I think. He said, as always, uh, thank you for your time. And just know that we all appreciate you and everything that you do for us. And just like, hopefully, if I'm right, the cold comes soon. The Ravens' worst defense will be out. <laughs> EDC. Next question came from my guy Noah. He said, what's up, team? Keep it clean. Hope all of you are doing good. And I hope your Thanksgiving does great. Don't burn the mac and cheese, LOL. I wanted to continue this talk on the interesting recent moves by EDC. Number two, trying to trade for Calais Campbell. More the same here. Trying to get another short-term deal for a veteran player. I ain't had no problem with that because... If you in win-now mode, okay, short-term deal, no problem. Go for it. Like, try to go all in for this year. Like, you don't, well, you ain't going to keep Clay's Campbell around for long term. He can ready to retire soon anyway. Anyway, he said, number two, dropping Ngakwe. You mentioned in your video the other day that usually teams will designate a player for IR as a way to avoid cutting a player. Now, if we think about Adisa Isaac, who I mentioned was another injured player he drafted in the third round, has only played one game this season. Well, guess what? He has still only played one game this season. Isaac hasn't played since week four against the Bills. Why not send him to IR and keep Ngakwe when we tried to trade for Calais to add D-line depth? That's true. You're right. Spot on. I got no arguments against that, against that at all. He said, now we know the defensive line looked good against the Bengals, but in reality, the Bengals only had two out of their five O-line starters playing that game. So I'm not really taking too much from that one. Mm. He said, number three, trading for Jadavius White. Even though it was a seventh round pick, low risk, high reward trade, does this remind you of that smartest man in the room mentality? In my opinion, essentially, he did the same thing he's been doing in the draft. using a draft pick on a player with injury history. Why not sign Micah Hyde, Xavier Howard, or Patrick Peterson and keep that pick? Oh, Patrick Peterson's still out there? They like look. They they could like with Xavier Howard. I I ain't realize about all his other stuff that he had going on allegedly. So I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay away from that one. But um, as far as Micah Hyde, Patrick Peterson, look, it, we can't get no worse. Defense can't get no worse. So why not? He said, "What I'm hoping is that if meaning we lose early in the playoffs, hopefully not, we won't." But anyway, he said he finally realizes his attempts to rinse and repeat the same old tricks over the past five years are still not working. Then he will make a few big time moves in the offseason after seeing how aggressive the Chiefs and the Lions were in this season. If not, I fear that we fans will be in the same position next year, hoping for next year. What I said. He said the four most dangerous words in investing are this time it's different. And like DJ Moore when Caleb Williams is scrambling, I'm out. Oh yeah, I like that because he walked off the field. Um, now, oh, if you, if you want to, oh, okay, I got you. Um, with, uh, with Eric DaCosta, yeah, Eric DaCosta, he will take, um, it all just depends. Cause he, they don't do the biggest swings. Now he did try for the Marshawn Lattimore. That was a significant swing. He tried to trade a third round pick, but the commanders, they outbid the Ravens. So that was that was a good swing right there, but um, we uh, he likes the the low risk type of stuff, um, more than the other the high risk stuff, um, because they really covered those draft picks. Now I know um this year yeah D Adisa Isaac you mentioned um been a, quite a few draft picks that haven't been playing uh and we get the guys that are in front of them but yeah with the roster. They could definitely use some tweaking. Um, and, and, hey, maybe it's, it's something that we don't see. It was for the whole Yannick and Gakwe thing, yeah, that was crazy. Again, like you mentioned, Adisa Isaac, he um he just he hasn't been being used, hasn't been playing, like, at all. He's been uh, one of the uh, the seven inactives, uh, like, pretty much every week, I think. Um, so, yeah, that was a very head-scratching move right there because if you kept Yannick and Gakwe, yeah, that, that's that much more depth for you. So, it's just... It was just very weird, and I didn't understand why they did it like that. But, um, yeah, I, I would love to see Eric DaCosta take some bigger swings, make some bigger attempts. And, again, the Marshawn Lattimore, that was a good one. 
Um, with the Calais Campbell, like I said, I had no problem with that move at all. But um, I would just like him to be more risky and really go for it. Next question came from my guy Derek. He said, "Engraving, I'm just gonna cut right to it, man. I miss Ed Reed. Oh, don't we all?" Every, he was the best ever, man. Anyway, he said, you don't know what you have until it's gone. Oh, no, no. We, we knew what we had. We certainly knew what we had in Air Reed. But, yeah, it, it, you get a good tap on the shoulder like, hey, <laughs> yeah, I know you're going to miss me when I'm out of here. And, yeah, we did. Um, he said, to the younger generation or new wave of Ravens fans who have, ne who have ever seen Ed Reed play, it was a thing of beauty and magic. Stuff that you can't even explain that doesn't have any logic to how that happened, but it did because he's Ed Reed. It really feels like another universe when Ed Reed played in purple. 12 years, man. My, new, my nephew Braylon was born in 2010, the same year Ed had to get that hit worked on, and he had the nerve uh, impingement in his neck and shoulder. I believe it was when he was contemplating retirement, but he came back. Uh, then the whole 2011 Billy Cundiff missed field goal. Then in 2012 Super Bowl, my nephew was just being born in 2010. Now my nephew's starting high school, man. Full mustache and all. Re reason why I bring him up is because he symbolizes how long it's been since Ed Reed last played here in Baltimore. And yeah, 2012, that was the last year. Because the following year, they didn't want to bring him back. I think he wanted to come back, but they didn't want to bring him back. And because Ray Lewis retired, they want to bring Ed Reed back. He went to sign with the Texans, signed a big deal with the Texans. They cut him in the middle of the season. Then he went with Rex Ryan to the Jets. And then after that, I believe he retired. Um, so it was crazy, man. And he did actually play the the, the Ravens, I think, I want to say twice that year. Definitely he played him with the Jets because we had went to that game where the Ravens played the Jets that year in 2013. But, yeah, Ed Reed, um, they have not been able to replace him and it's airy he's doing the best ever so i mean it's hard because they try with earl thomas appreciate you for trying like that last question we talked about um that was eric acosta trying so he tried he took a big swing with that one so i appreciate it um they tried with marcus williams it looked good in the beginning but it ain't been looking good recently um so but yeah then they, they tried with matt elam i mean in 2013 but they they took matt elam and tried to make him something that he wasn't so yeah anyway um he said that uh Airy last played here in uh, 2012. It went from feeding his nephew, changing diapers, uh, to now him selling me his spare iPhone and asking him to factory reset it for me. Uh, that's how long it's been since Air played, and it just blows my mind. I loved Airy, but part of me feels like I didn't appreciate him enough, especially with the product that's on the field today. <laughs> He said, especially with the product that's on the field today. Oh, yeah, that, that, that Ravens defense now, it'll definitely give you a, an even deeper appreciation uh, for past Ravens defenses. 